Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host, focusing on small business management, marketing, and financing. Today, a topic is practice safe stress to maximize profit in your, and the workplace. Today's special guest is Barry Roberts, who is an author of Practice Safe Stress. If you'd like to speak to Barry, please call in at 347-324-3460. Again, 347-324-3460. Or you can pose a question in the chat room, or you can Twitter at hashtag Apple Capital. Barry, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I guess to begin with, just tell us about yourself and how did you get started? <laughs> how I got started is uh, too long a story for the show, but I'll give, you the, uh, <laughs> I'll give you the condensed version. Humor has just always been an important part of, of my life. As a child, I guess I used it to, to help me make friends. I used it to help me get through some tough classes in school where the teachers weren't too happy with the work I did, but they liked me because I just had a, a good sense of humor. and. One of my one of my dear friends, uh, Gil Eagles, who is a uh, oh, just an awesome speaker, pointed mm-hmm. out to me years ago, years ago, how valuable my sense of humor is and my perspective on humor is. And he said, Barry, if you can find a way to bottle that and share it with other people, you've got something. And wow. so I began quite a few years of research, and the research is ongoing into mm-hmm. uh, how humor affects us as human beings. And uh, that's what I speak on out in the corporate world, and that's what the book is about. And the response has been uh, truly very wonderful. Wow, that's amazing. And some of the topics I think we, we talked about regarding humor itself, in the workplace, I know we are stressed for all types of reasons, from if you're in the sales department, of course, you have sales quotas to meet. If you're in the county, you have to close out on time. You have family stresses, you have personal stresses, you have emotional, I mean, you just name it. What can a person do in order to, as an employer, to keep the employees focused on what they need to get done and not necessarily block out what's really distracting you, but to give them some tools to say, hey, this is how to keep this fun, exciting, but you know, kind of give a solution for the, the employer to kind of keep his company running without, you know, he turns his back a moment and then things are falling, falling apart because of, personality conflicts between workers and stresses of life. What advice will you give them? All right, first of all, let's make it clear that we are talking about day-to-day stress mm-hmm. as opposed to traumatic stress. Sure. So that's issue number one. And I'm sure that we, we all realize that stress does nothing but tie us up in knots. We don't think clearly when we're stressed. We don't behave the way we we would like to behave when we're stressed, and I, I realize some people might say they work better under under pressure, and that's fine, but when the stress starts to get hold of you, that's when we lose our perspective, that's when we lose our self-confidence, and that's what I said, that's when we start to get angry and frustrated and so on. So if we can learn to use some tools to remind us that there is some humor out there. We can look at a stressful situation and say, wait a minute, before this ties me up in knots, what's funny about this? Or what does this remind me of that's funny? And once we find the answer to that question, that's when the stress starts to diminish. And additionally, there have been study after study that have shown that where humor is present, there is also creativity. And so when we learn to use our sense of humor to minimize the day-to-day stress, not only do we start to think more clearly, but we think more creatively, and we can use that as another tool to resolve the issues that are causing us the stress in the first place. So it's a very interesting cycle. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's not about, we're not talking about telling jokes. We're not even talking about laughing out, out loud. 
there are some definite, as I said, some tricks and tools and philosophies that we can use to remind us to find the stress in most any situation. And as, as an employer, that was your question, how do the mm-hmm. employers help their employees? As an employer, first and foremost, if, if the employer has a lighthearted, outgoing sense of humor, a lighthearted attitude, then his employees will take more kindly to him. You see, basically, if, if I can make you laugh, like if I can make you feel good, then you like me. Mm-hmm. And w- once you like me, you want to be a productive member of my team. And, and again, it, it all comes down to remembering to find the humor in, in any situation. And there are definite tools that I speak about and that I've written about that can, that can help us to do that. Okay. Any particular, just one particular item that a person can do? Should they take deep breaths when they feel that attack coming on or that, should they go walking? Or? Absolutely a good idea. Take a deep okay. breath. Take a deep breath. Relax for a moment. Absolutely, absolutely a good idea. One of the most important things that I advocate is that we all get into the habit of practicing what I call the five-minute fun fling. Mm -hmm. A five-minute fun fling, very simply, is a five-minute or less humor break that we give ourselves permission to take at any time we want to, and certainly whenever we need to. And during that five minutes, You'll find that you'll be able to, to first of all, your breathing will come back to normal. You'll start to calm down a little bit. You'll find that, that the humor that you've sought in those five minutes, the humor will help you to think a little more clearly, to be a little more relaxed. And once that happens, as I said, we can start thinking more creatively about how to resolve the real life problem. And I hear from people all the time that tell me, a five minute humor break? Are you nuts? My day is so crazy. My day is so crazy. I can't afford five minutes to do all that. And and they start getting more stressed out at the thought of it. But if you get into the habit of practicing the five-minute fun fun fling, you'll find that that will save you time as opposed to what people might initially perceive as wasting five Mm -hmm. minutes because the clarity of mind that it brings to you will help you in so many ways. And uh, at my website at barryroberts.com, there's a little more defined uh, definition of the five-minute fun fling and some examples of the five-minute fun fling. There are over 200 five-minute fun flings suggested in the book, which really points out how important I think these these five-minute fun flings are. So that, and that's just one of the one of the ideas. I'll share some more as we go along in our talk today. Okay. For example, I know there used to be I think at the turn of this uh, past decade a lot of. Uh, internet humor going around and you know joel osteen kind of by accident ran into something that actually works for him before some preachers will say something to get a the congregation kind of uh motivated and focused and to break that cycle of stiffness and i think he said he just saw something funny and he just read to his uh, congregation and it seems to work and he uses it every time before he speaks. And it makes him actually comfortable when he actually speaks to them, and it, it breaks the defenses of them as well. So I don't know. That's like an, a good example of giving them something funny to laugh at before you really get started with the, the heart of the uh, what's going on. It's a very good example. In fact, um, studies have been done at Harvard University that have shown that uh, teachers who inject a fair amount of humor into their lessons, generally do, uh, turn out students, rather, who generally do better on their exams. And the Mm. reason is very simple. You see, humor piques our interest. Once you've piqued someone's interest, they become more attentive, and it becomes easier for them to retain the information that you are imparting. And these studies have gone on to show that the, the very same thing holds true for anyone speaking to any group of people large or small, formal or informal, if you can inject a little bit of humor into your talk at the beginning of your sales meeting, at, at, at any kind of business conference, then you have, you've got that audience in your hands. They're going to listen, they're going to enjoy you, and they're going to retain what you're saying. And which brings me to another, another one of my techniques that I talk about, and that is to get into the habit of keeping a humor journal. 
because I, I realize we may wow. not be, yes, we may not be reaching any professional comedy writers out there. And yet I'm just suggesting to everyone that you add some humor. If you've got a meeting to run in your business, uh, how, well, how do we do that? If you get into the habit of keeping a humor journal, which is just any place where you can jot down anything you see or read or hear that you think is funny. You know, I travel a lot in my work, so I'm constantly people watching, and there are funny things happening all the time. They go into my <laughs> humor journal. Cartoons that I might see in a newspaper or magazine, I clip them out. I put them in my, in my humor journal. Ads, ads that you see. Just there's all kind of funny things happening around us. Even the jokes some people might email me that I think are particularly funny, they go into my humor journal. And what this humor journal does is a wonderful thing. First of all, when you get into the habit of keeping a humor journal and you're out there looking and listening for things that are funny, just that is going to do a tremendous amount to brighten your day, to help you minimize some of that stress. That's number one. Number two, if, you, if you're feeling a little down, feeling a little blue, go through your humor journal. You're bound to find something that will make you smile, laugh, or feel better. And finally, if you have a meeting to run, whether it's large, small, formal, or informal, and you want to inject a little humor into your talk, go through your humor journal. You will probably find something suitable for your audience or appropriate for your topic, some original humor that you can interject into your talk that will do the job uh, it's intended to do. So keeping wow. that humor journal, it's a fabulous thing to do, and it's fun. So It, it is. I mean... People naturally are funny. <laughs> if you really look at things in life, you can just go to a mall or a public event and you will see something that is really funny across the board, just even in the airports. I think a friend of mine yesterday, an attorney, said, hey, I had to defend a client uh, that stay across the street from a bank. And he had tattooed on his forehead, stick up. He walked into the local bank across the street and he said, I would like to make a withdrawal. And in the course, the teller read what it was on his head, gave him money. Then he's going to quietly walk back out with all this money. It's just crazy. And he's <laughs> trying to defend himself on that. And so how can you defend that? You should have known that she gave you all this money that was not in your account. It was actually a holdup. So what is your defense? So and he was saying that, you know, telling his client and the feds said, well, you can't necessarily go into a jury with this thing on your head, you automatically <laughs> guilty. So, <laughs> but we see these things play a part, you know, through the internet on YouTube. YouTube is famous for it. Yep. But I guess that's a prime example, as you may just keep a journal of these funny things and just share it with the community. Maybe break out your day. They happened not so long ago. I was forget where I was. I think it was in Arizona. I I had rented a car to get to the meeting site. I flew into town rented a car, and in driving there, I was stopped at a red light. There was a brand new Mercedes-Benz uh, in the lane next to me at the red light. The top was down. Now, I have to admit, there was a rather attractive woman at the wheel. I, I couldn't help notice that. When the light turned green, she pulled out ahead of me, and that's when I saw her license plate, which said, was his. <laughs> as soon as I got wow. to the hotel, I made a little entry of that story into my into my humor journal. So things happen. They're out there. We just have to be looking for them. And, and I promise you, looking for these things, jotting them down, using them when you need them, it makes a huge difference in our lives. You know, just thinking about that, I think as an exercise, I know in sales organizations, it's really busy throughout the day. But you have moments that things are pretty quiet, even if you're in a telephone room. You, they allow you to break. So in a sense, when you take your break, you know, just share a funny story. It might, like you just mentioned, it might be a good exercise that's only take maybe two or three minutes. And before you go back into your workplace and maybe bring your stress level down, and then deal with that task again. Well, if there, if there is a sort of a break room, a lunch room, a little coffee room, whatever, in any workplace, it's often a good idea for the employer to encourage his, his or her employees to look for things and jot them down or, or cartoons you can cut out and post them on a bulletin board in that break room. Wow. And, and once a month, clear them off and, and start all over again. Uh, 
it just adds some fun for everybody and and it's a good place to go when the stress has started to get to you and you need to cool down a little bit. And I do advocate also that when we are feeling stressed, that's the time to get up and walk away from the place where the stress is happening. If it's at your desk, you know, finish do the phone call. I mean, don't hang up on anybody, but um, <laughs> finish what you're doing. Take a moment. Just get up and walk away from your desk. Walk out of the office and take a five-minute fun fling. Do a crossword puzzle if that's fun for you. Go check out that, that bulletin board if that's fun for you. Sit down and try to write uh, a funny limerick about this person or incident that's bugging you. Uh, but just find something fun to do for five minutes. Go back to your desk and you'll see how much more productive and creative you'll be. Wow. Involves is in good taste. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, listen, yeah. there, there are two very important rules that we have to follow in all okay. of this. Rule number one is no one may get hurt physically nor emotionally while we're having some fun. Mm -hmm. And rule number two is that, yes, as productive and responsible adults, we need to remain productive even while we're having our fun. Because that's the point of, of the fun in this case. The point is to help us to help us calm down, to help us minimize the stress so we can move on and be more efficient, wow. but never at the expense of anyone else. Absolutely. Any successful companies that have made in a workplace uh, humor part of their success? Do you know well, about? yeah, Southwest Airlines, I mean, is that's what their whole company is based on. That's what their whole philosophy is about. They, they built a very successful business advocating humor, not only in the workplace, amongst all the employees, mm -hmm. but in, in sharing that humor with their customers, with their passengers. And it works anywhere. I mean, if you own a dry cleaning store, <laughs> and there's another one down the street, but I'm the dry cleaner that you come to, and I make you laugh. I, get, I show you a little bit of a good time while, we're, while I'm writing out your receipt and you're handing me your clothing. You're going to want to come to my store, not, not the moody, unfriendly guy down the street. <laughs> it's just that simple. Absolutely. It's really just that simple. Do you think that a part of Southwest as a company, is that part of their success is making their, their passengers comfortable, comfortable at the very beginning and doing fun things? They don't, they never offered, you know, full meals. They never offered this and that. And well, they give you good anymore. service. Yeah. <laughs> but back in that time when people were used to it and it had been a discount carrier, I mean, they're seeing their thing for you. You know, you're the pretzel king or you can be the peanut queen or whatever. Absolutely. Made the whole experience fun. I agree. And and even when there's a problem, you know, if they're backed up on the runway or whatever, some problems I, I think are the fault of, of the airline and some, some problems just are not. You know, weather mm -hmm. delays and things like that. Again, if you're sitting on board that plane and the pilot comes on, this is your captain speaking, We've been delayed because of this, that, and the other thing. You know, however, they, they've got a way of explaining things. And so it'll be 30 minutes delay before we can take off. Everybody sits there moaning, and, oh, no, this stinks, and so on and so forth. However, if the captain comes on and says something, tells you the facts, but somehow makes it fun, and the flight crew starts singing songs with you and playing some kind of game, you know what? You're not all that ticked off. The time goes by a little faster. You get to the other end and someone says, how is your flight? Instead of saying that miserable airline, I'm never flying that airline again. You're going to get there and say, you know what? We had a little bit of a delay, but, but it was fun. I like Southwest. They're, they're a great airline to go with or XYZ airline or whoever it happens to be because people just enjoy, enjoy laughing, enjoy feeling good. And they respond better. They work mm -hmm. better. They relate better. It's just a fabulous tool to have in your pocket. Wow. Any particular, I think you mentioned, any props that you can use, you have your fun journal, any particular mm -hmm. props that you can use that can be fun, and how can you use those props? Well, it's going to be difficult to describe on the radio, <laughs> but I'll do my best. I keep a drawer in my desk filled with humor props. Mm -hmm. um, my my favorite one is a rubber clown nose. And you can get them online. Just Google clown noses. You'll find a million places to buy them. And, um, you know, we all deal with conflict. Sometimes it's face-to-face. -face, sometimes it's on the telephone. 
And to me, conflict on the telephone is is worse than a, a face-to-face conflict. I don't mean any big major thing, just some disconcerting situation. Because if I'm on the phone with someone and there is some conflict and I can't read their eyes and I can't see their face, I don't really know how they're reacting to the points I'm trying to make, to what it is that I'm trying to say. And that in itself gets a little frustrating to me. So mm-hmm. in the middle of a conversation, without skipping a beat, I take my clown nose out of my drawer. Tim, this is, this is the truth. I take my clown nose out of my drawer. I put it on. I have a little mirror that I prop up at my desk so I could see myself. And once I see how ridiculous I look in the face of this conflict I'm having on the phone, you know what? Nothing bothers me so much anymore. Certainly not that guy, because I'm thinking to myself, he's getting all hot under the collar. And look at me. I'm having a pretty good time here with my, with my clown nose on and my goofy face in that, in that mirror. And then it happens. Then I start to smile at myself a little bit. Mm-hmm. Then I start to think a little more clearly. Then I'm more easily able to come up with a solution to whatever it is that's, that's causing us the conflict. And so no one gets hurt. I wouldn't do that in front of someone. Mm-hmm. But on the phone, nobody knows but me. And the, and the technique works. It works for me. It works for the person on the other end because they want to get this over with as badly as I do. And so I keep some humor props at my desk. And in fact, in a face-to-face conflict, if you are the first one to inject a little bit of humor where there is conflict, this will help tremendously because, number one, it's rather difficult for two people to remain angry while they're sharing a laugh. Secondly, as I mentioned earlier, humor generates more creative and innovative thinking. So once we share a little laugh, we both start to think a little more creatively, we get the issue resolved, and we can move on. And you will be able to find the humor where there is conflict if you've developed the habit of practicing the five-minute fun flings, if you've gotten into the habit of keeping a humor journal, if you've really put in a little bit of effort into making humor a regular part of your day-to-day life. So all these things take a little practice, but they pay off big time in the end, and it's fun along the way. Okay, wow. Yeah, now, with this whole process, where can I get your book again? I know you have it on your website. Is it available through Amazon? It is, but I, the easiest place to get it mm-hmm. uh, is is at my website at okay. barryroberts.com. Okay. And within the book, does it outline? And you know what? Excuse me for interrupting you. Right. If, um, if anyone uh, wishes to get the book um, and orders it through my uh, through the website, there's a place for comments at the bottom of the order form. Mm-hmm. Um, if you mentioned that you heard about it on, on this show, I'll pay the shipping. Okay. Great shipping. So a little bonus for your listeners. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, My pleasure. With the book itself, does it outline what a business owner can do in order to make his his business more stress-free? Is it kind of laid out that way or is it kind of laid out by chapters? No. It, what you learn in the book is how you can minimize your own day-to-day stress. And okay. once you're able to do that, and once you realize all the benefits of it for you, and you, if you are the employer, mm-hmm. then then you'll easily be able to share that with your employees, and the, and the whole workplace just, just turns around. Wow. A happy workplace is a happy employees. <laughs> right. Vice versa. Anything like happy you like life, to... happy wife, you know, same thing at work. <laughs> if the boss is happy, Absolutely. everyone's happy. There yeah. you go. Anything you'd like to uh, leave the audience with about the book itself? Any closing comments? And I guess if the you book... can sing this, a, a little maybe bridge of this entertainment, which is you sing it all the time. The the book is it's a very light read. You can be finished with the book in an hour. Okay. And while there are a whole lot of techniques that I talk about in the book and things you could do to make positive humor a valuable part of your life, you need only find one or two that work for you. Mm -hmm. Practice them and make them work to see really what what the difference is. And if you need a little nudge every once in a while and uh, while you're at my website, care to sign up for my free monthly more or less uh, e-zine. It's just a one-sheet Usually something fun, 
that I, that I send out to everyone on the list and people tell me that, that they find that, you know, that's a good little monthly reminder of, oops, I, I, I better get, keep that humor going in my, in my work day because it really does make a difference. Wow. So the e-zine is out there. The book is out there. The website is out there. Email me if I can ever be of any help. I leave all of that for you and your listeners. Okay. I really appreciate you coming on to the program, Barry. I appreciate your book. Definitely, I would get it. But again, thank you for coming on to the program. It was a pleasure for me. I wish all of you good luck and uh, good humor. Same here. Take care. Bye. I appreciate Bye-bye. it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Again, Barry Roberts, the author of uh, Practice Safe Stress to Maximize Process in the Workplace. Can you get this book on barryroberts.com? Thank you for listening. You can download this episode on iTunes, a blog, talk radio, or a podcast. Thank you for listening, and have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.